Well, good to see you guys tonight. Great to have some of you back. You've been traveling, and uh, great to see everyone together. Some new faces tonight, which is always awesome to see old friends. And uh, so we're so excited uh, to have everyone tonight. I have uh, one more announcement. We're doing this uh, devotional as a church. It's called In Breaking, The Kingdom Come at Christmas. And you can grab these in the back. And we have a challenge for you, this little card here. It tells you what to do each week. And you read, you fill it out, and you check it off. And you turn this in at the end, and we're going to have a drawing for some great prizes. And uh, I think the top three prizes are going to be cash. Sweet. Yeah, so, so we just, that's encouraging to get into the Word. And we thought it would be great everybody doing this uh, devotional together. How many of you have already started in on it? A lot of you? Good. Praise God. Well, I hope we get a lot of uh, huge turned in. It's really good. That comes out of the Vineyard USA. They give us that. All right. So I've asked Dean to come down and light the candles, uh, Advent candles tonight. Advent is the arrival and inbreaking of our King and our Lord and His Kingdom. So we start with the candle of hope. Because Jesus is the hope of the world. You slide that up and then push down. There you go. All right. Next, we lit the candle of peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And then this third week, we're lighting the candle of joy because Advent's about the joy that is ours because Jesus came to us. So we light the candle and we rejoice in this Advent season. You know, I was out today and it just seemed like this town had such a new energy. I was out last night in downtown and the streets were full and the lights were on. They really made the downtown really pretty with all the changes they've done. And uh, I was out at City Market. It was packed. I saw in the news briefly it said that the economy is booming. People are buying twice as much as what was expected by the merchants. So I'm like... Everybody's, uh, I think, you know, this change and, and uh, Trump is bringing jobs back and different things, stop going. And so I, it's just kind of this atmosphere of joy that I saw today. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, I've got a few trivia questions for you, though. And if you get it, you get a small candy. <laughs> okay. Now, you great scholars, let, let someone else have a couple of things. First, uh, what town was King David born in? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, over here. Who said that? All right. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. Okay. Another one. Who appeared? Who appeared to Mary to tell her she would have a son? David. Who said that? David. Who said that? David? Yeah, David. Oh. <laughs> back in the back. Oh! oh. That was my <laughs> okay. Uh, who followed the star to find baby Jesus? Wise man. Wise man. Wise man. Hannah. Hannah. All right. Heads up. There you go. What's the deal? Okay. Somebody's out behind I got one more in just a minute. So we're going to pick up the story. Um, Mary and Joseph are headed to Bethlehem, the city of David. And uh, I think it's awesome that David, King David, King David, and King Jesus were both born there in Bethlehem. So we're going to pick it up. Um, this is Luke 2, starting verse uh, 6. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And the inn at that time was really just what we may call now an extra room or a bed and breakfast. There wasn't a best western, you know, <laughs> a, a Hilton Inn in Bethlehem. I, I think growing up I always thought there was some sort of little hotel there in Bethlehem. But people would rent out their rooms during this time. So that's really what it is. 
So there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom His favor rests. So this is the inbreaking of our Lord Jesus. And let's get back up to the angels. So this one angel shows up, and it says that the glory was all around them. All around these shepherds. So they were terrified. And uh, I'm picturing, you know, usually you think you see an angel and the angel's all lit up. But it says all around them, it was, there was the glory of the Lord shone around them. So there was light everywhere. It wasn't just around that angel. It was all around them, just a, a big light. The glory of the Lord shining on them. And uh, this is the other question. Uh, what did the shepherds hope for when the angels spoke about great joy? Anybody know? What were they hoping for? And who is he? Messiah, Savior. That's close. You guys are all right. We'll give it over. So it's uh, a Savior. They were looking for a Savior. So for years, the Old Testament prophets have been speaking about Jesus' birth, the Messiah, the Christ. And actually, uh, both in, in Hebrew, both uh, the Messiah and the Christ mean the anointed one. And so this was it. This is what they've been hoping for. The angels are telling them, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ. The Christ, they knew that meant the Messiah. The anointed one has him. And, uh, and then what happens? A whole heavenly host of angels show up. They don't want to miss out, I think, on this event. And so they said that uh, scholars believe that was thousands of angels appear. And so they were, they were all marveled and they went down and they went to see Jesus. So um, I wanted us to also look at what Isaiah says in Isaiah 9.1. It says, uh, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor the Galilee of the Gentiles by way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation. You have increased their joy. And they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. So here we have a parallel of what was happening. You go back into the Old Testament the prophecy, great joy has appeared. And you would think about these people, you think that they were living, things were going good for them. Not according to what this says. It says they were in darkness. They were in darkness. They were living in the shadow of death. And Jesus shows up. They hadn't heard from the Lord in 400 years. And the prophets, and the prophets had been gone. The judges had been gone. And now they're hearing about Jesus. So there's a great joy there. Great joy. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. For who? For some of the people? For all the people. All the people get to hear the good news of Jesus. You know, we see it sometimes, this inbreaking of Jesus into our own life. Because He continues to break in. He continues to break in even into our day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had uh, our Kingdom School of Ministry here the other night about three weeks ago. We were praying for a gal uh, who uh, couldn't hear out of one ear for about two years. And they were praying for her. And she'd been prayed for a few times. And, and nothing at first. And they said, well... Pray again. So they prayed again. And uh, the gal said, well, go whisper.
something in her ear, see if it's worked. And, uh, and, she, and the gal uh, said, oh, I hear a little something, I hear something. And so they asked the gal who whispered in her ear, I said, what did you say? Oh, I just whispered, I just, whoosh. oh, well, the same words. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> get back over there. So they stood there and uh, she spoke in words and she screamed. You know how girls can scream? She <laughs> screamed because she could hear. 60% of her ear is, is, was healed right then. Yeah. And she heard. And so she was, I can't display how she acted, but it was very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going like this, and her smile was all across her face. Joy in breaking in. From who? The King, Jesus. Amen. He breaks in and stories into our lives. Uh, I got to go on this mission trip to New Orleans. I know I've mentioned it a few times. Just being, uh, we circled up at night to talk about what happened during the day and the Holy Spirit hit me so hard it broke on me, I just started crying, I couldn't stop crying next thing you know, I'm laughing and people are like what's going on Greg, because I was crying the next thing, the, I think he's laughing you know, they're trying, they're trying to look at me and I'm, you know I had my head down and uh, I tried to pull myself together. <laughs> you know, it says don't get drunk on wine, but get drunk on the spirit. Amen. That was what I, was I couldn't stop laughing. And then somebody else caught it and they started laughing. God broke in. Jesus broke in. And that in breaking and that joy hit me. And uh, I couldn't do anything about it. It was like a 15 minute episode <laughs> of being drunk in the spirit. So we, could, we should continually. Be uh, prepared for that. That God continue to break into our lives. That we should be wanting Him, searching for Him, expecting Him to break into our lives with joy. One of the things that uh, helps me sometimes when things aren't going so well is to write down all the good things that have happened in my life. All the blessings. Because the truth is what we focus on is what we become. So if we focus in on the joy of the Lord, we focus in on those times when He broke in and it's touched our lives, that gives us the strength to continue on even if we're in a rough season in our life. Mm. So the joy of the Advent, what is joy? Joy is celebration, unrestrained happiness, emotional outbursts of rejoicing, basking in the love that God has blessed us with by sending His one and only Son to take our place. And joy is that we're going to have eternal life with Him. I mean, I think about heaven and what the Bible says, and streets of gold, and they can't even describe it. It's so beautiful. Uh, the, the river says it's like crystal water, whatever that looks like, crystals. And uh, it's so magnificent, they don't have words in our language to describe it. That's, that gives me joy, <laughs> you know? It gives me joy in my heart to know that that's where my eternity will be. So Jesus uh, has for us this question tonight. Is there joy in your heart? And if not, why? Or who is stealing your joy? You know, sometimes things that are good, we have to fight for. Maybe we need to have some boundaries in our lives. Sometimes toxic people come into our lives. Sometimes things happen where we need to set up some boundaries to retain our joy. We have a place of joy in our lives, a place where you go to hear from God, a boundary like this is my time with the Lord and nobody interrupts it, you kind of boundary, see what I'm saying? That you can have that time of connection with the Lord, that you can have that joy. There's a great book, um, uh, it's called Boundaries, when to say yes and when to say no to take control of your life. And it deals with relationships, it deals with being at work, it deals with all these different kind of things that People try to come and steal our joy. Work comes up, different things. And it's such an excellent book that it's okay to tell people no. I heard this story by uh, Bill Hybels. He said at 4 o'clock, him and this guy would run for about 40 minutes. They'd go jogging every day. Well, this guy was in a big crisis in his marriage, and he called, and he goes, what about at 4 o'clock? He goes, no, I'm sorry. I have to meet you later, maybe the next day, because I have an appointment then. <laughs> His appointment was to go jogging. But he's in ministry for the long haul. He knows that if he just dropped every time somebody had an emergency, he would burn out. See, it was a healthy boundary. He's keeping his joy. And so he went jogging, and the next day he was able to meet with this guy. 
So it's, it's things like that. I was a mechanic at one time, and all the mechanics got together in this lunchroom. And these guys are rough, and they're talking perverted stuff and obscene language, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do my lunches in here. This isn't good for me. And so I found this little cafe down the street that I would go and have lunch by myself. But I love the, the piece of it. I got to know the waitresses and the staff and the cook. Because <laughs> I went there every day for lunch for, year, for several years. Uh, but I didn't want to be in that room with those guys. Amen. It was tearing me down. It was stealing my joy. So those are kind of the things that sometimes we need to do in our lives. Some of the greatest times of joy in my life is when the uh, Lord has broken in and just spoke to me. Just I heard the Lord speak or give me a dream or a vision. That's joyful. To know I'm connecting with the God Almighty who made heaven and earth. He whispers, gives me a dream, a little vision, uh, a scent sometimes. I can even go into the woods and just feel His presence. Those are times of great joy for me. So seek those times. Look for those times to hear from the Lord. I challenge you all to, to sit there and, and ask Him, Lord, will you speak to me however you may? Because He wants us to ask that we might receive. Also, I get a lot of joy just worshiping the Lord, singing and praising the Lord. I've got worship CDs going in my car all the time. I play it sometimes in my garage. And uh, just a joyful noise, a celebration. It helps me with it, uh, not think about the things of this world, mm. the troubles of it. So also, joy is seeing Jesus for who He really is. <clears throat> Unfortunately, a lot of people grew up in the church telling us that He's this taskmaster out to get us. That He's just up there in heaven looking at our sins just shocked. But that's not true of our Lord Jesus. Let me... Uh, Read this quote. This is a great book. It's called The Gospel in Ten Words by Paul Ellis. It's one of the books we're reading in the School of Kingdom Ministry. He quotes, he says, God is not mad with you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Isaiah 54 says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills depart, His unfailing love for you will not be removed. Now, that sounds like a lot of stuff happening there. Mountains could be shaking things are falling apart, hills fall apart. That could be from something we've done. That could be something around us. But what does it say? That His love for us will never be removed. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. And there is joy in that. Let me read a quote out here. It says, Taking the sin of the world into His body, Jesus drank from the cup of God's wrath, and He drank the cup dry. His grace is greater than your sin. The cross is a picture of spit anger and furious love. The cross is God shouting, let my children go. And we can barely fathom this because we have done nothing to merit this favor from our Lord. But isn't this the good news? On the cross he's saying, let my people go. He's overcoming the enemy and he's saying, you cannot touch me anymore. I'm going to overcome you. And I'm going to get the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he did. Amen. 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 God demonstrated his own love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. We didn't have to get cleaned up, get ready, made all nice. While we were sinners, he came and did it for us. Beautiful. Um, beautiful. All right. John 3.17, Jesus came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. We were in Romans, we did a study, Romans 8. <clears throat> that we, that there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because we are a new creation in Christ. He accomplished everything at the cross so we don't have to beat ourselves up. He is happy that we're in the kingdom with Him. Amen. He's smiling. He knows we're blowing it at times. He doesn't care. He's smiling because he's he sees us in the finished race. He sees us as we are meant to be. That we are the image bearers of God. That we are overcome. That we have the anointing of the Lord. That we become this new creation in Christ. And that we can walk and, and move and live and have our being in His presence. And in His destiny and in His purpose. And it's something different than the world's ever known. And we're just barely grasping it. Barely grasping the truth of who we are. 
But as we continue just to follow him and seek him and seek his word, those layers come off. We start seeing the beauty of all that Jesus has done for us and how he sees us, how much love he has for us. You know, you think about how far you would go for your son or daughter, how much you would do for them. And if they were a killer, if they were in prison, you would still love them. And some people think, well, God's angry, he's angry at this. No, he's, he's got more love than that. You know why? Because he is love. God's love is like a fountain that shoots off. You can't stop it because that's who he is. We have love based on feelings and different things, but his love just bursts out like a fountain because that's who he is. He can't help but love us. <laughs> he created us. In his image, he loves us. And so there's great joy in his love. Amen. Look at, uh, look at his uh, first miracle. He turns water into wine. It's a party. They're having a party. Jesus is there. Celebration's happening. He's smiling. He's not this taskmaster. He likes us to have fun. He likes us to laugh and enjoy. What else gives us joy? When we participate in sin, doesn't it always take from us? It takes our joy. It steals our peace. It always leaves us unfulfilled. And then the ripple effects that we have to deal with. But when we participate with Jesus, there's life. There's, uh, he gives. He always gives. So he gives life. And he gives joy and peace and hope to us when we participate with the Lord. And those ripple effects go out and touch others. What else can give us joy? Unexpected joy. One of the ways to receive joy is to give. Missions, outreach, get involved, blessing someone, opening a door, helping your neighbor. In 2 Corinthians 9 7, Paul tells us that God loves a cheerful, hilarious giver. The entire context in the statement abounds with joy, generosity, fullness, and excitement. Paul says those who Give little, reap little. In verse 8, God tells us He will always provide for us in such a way that we can live with enough and yet give in abundance. This is the principle He's talking about tithing and giving. But it expands to just more than the church. It expands to our life. Where are we giving? Who are we helping? Who are we blessing? Because He just pours it all back into us and He provides more for us to give up. Isn't that the beautiful picture? It just continually flows out. You can't outgive God. I've tried. <laughs> I had some huge tithe checks for a while. I'm just like, I'm just going to see if I can outgive God. And all of a sudden, uh, things came up. If we sold our house, we made a bunch of money. We were able to buy another house. It just, I was actually tithing in, uh, on a credit card, which I don't recommend. But, uh, <laughs> it's just kind of where we were. But God met us there. And then when we sold the house, I was able to clear out that debt. But, but God is faithful and just in that way. He just try to outgive, but you can't do it. Uh, my daughter, the other night, she was at School of Kingdom Ministry, and we were praying for uh, someone. And uh, <laughs> she got to laughing, kind of like what happened to me down in New Orleans. And she got drunk in the spirit. She was laying over here and laughing and laughing. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe it. I hadn't seen that in all those years since then. Very rarely did I see that kind of uh, thing happen, but she really got a touch of the Lord that night. Well, I want to show this video clip coming up. And this video clip is all about joy. It's about the inbreaking of God happening around the world today. It's still happening, and it's celebration time. So let's look at this uh, video clip. Right In the name of Jesus, I command blind eyes. About five years ago, I got shot. This new MCL. I hurt myself real bad. I was in Healing is the easiest part of all. This is the part Jesus has done completely, 100%. Just the opposite. 
healed everyone who came to him. Jesus went around and he healed all. So all means all. It doesn't mean some. It doesn't mean, no, only a couple. He said all. And that's what we're called to do. We're yeah. called to be just like our daddy. To go lay hands on the sick and see them recover. somehow went back to where it was supposed to go and he literally was in the street doing backflips. <laughs> I wanted to show you that part but I couldn't pull it up. But talk about joy, right? Did you see the lady on the wheelchair? Just, I mean, it's joy. It's just joy. It's pure joy of the Lord showing up in an awesome way like that. Mm. You know, one of the other great uh, things that brings me joy is just being in the Word of God. How much the Scriptures bring into me I can begin to read them and just things start to melt and, and calm them down. And I feel a peace and a presence of God come over me. The scriptures are still alive and powerful today and more than ever. Jesus is the Word of God. And He is alive and well and so it's powerful when we get into the Word. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wanted to tell you uh, in my Bible app, it's called Version. You can play it. You can play it if you're out in the garage or wherever you're at. And it has different versions. You can get the message or the NIV. It's a great app. That's free. So try it out. That's my uh, challenge to you guys. Find a time. Maybe you're getting ready in the morning if you're a woman. Start playing the Word of God. Just pick a, a chapter or a book or something while you're getting your makeup on. And uh, one of the things that, uh, one of my favorite uh, scriptures, uh, I got to write on the back of our cards that we give out. This one brings me great peace and joy. It says, uh, Isaiah, this is Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy yes. and my burden is light. Mm. Isn't that just bring you down. Isn't that just calling you? That's a good verse to memorize. So you take these cards that's in the back of it. You find somebody you want to minister to. Share that verse. Share about the church. Be great. 
just knowing that Jesus has got me. He's never going to leave me nor forsake me. He is gentle and a humble Savior. And in Jesus we can find rest for our souls. So how do we apply this today? Will we open ourselves up to Jesus because He is joy? <laughs> Serve others. Joy comes from serving others, giving of ourselves in ministry or however it is. Uh, focusing on others instead of ourselves. Surrendering any selfish ambitions and laying them at Jesus' feet. This takes practice. This is the journey we're in, right? To overcome sin, to overcome our own desires and focus in on what Jesus has done in our lives and who He's called us to be. In uh, Philippians 2.13, it says, God is the one working in us to accomplish His will through us. So we're not out there doing this thing on our own. Like we talked about in addictions and that cycle, really can't break out of that on your own. Miraculously, can happen. But usually you need counseling. You need to see somebody. You need someone to come alongside of you. And so that's what God does with us as well. He comes alongside of us. He partners with us that we could be the people that He's called us to be. We're not in this alone. And I think that's a big part is just realizing how much He loves you and not beating yourself up, not condemning yourself. It gives Him the freedom to keep it going. And you know what's better? It's just to have that freedom focus. I am free in Christ. You might blow it and sin. I am free in Christ. Blow it and sin. I am free in Christ. Because now you're focusing on the freedom that He's given us. Jesus says that in Him there's freedom. The truth brings us freedom. And as we have the truth in our life, more freedom comes. Greg, what are you focusing on? I'm focusing on the freedom that Jesus paid for on the cross. That I could be free from the things of this world. That I could be free from the bodies and lives of Satan. And there's joy in that. So I just lay down all my anxiety, all the striving and the busyness. Try to embrace a slower lifestyle and simplify your life. Think about one thing in your life you can stop doing and just simplify your life. Give it to someone else to do it. <laughs> Hire someone else to do it. And then enjoy what's really important. And that's that time in the Lord. That's time serving and giving and being part of His kingdom. So let's let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Why don't we have the worship team come up? In Isaiah 9, 6 it says, For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. So who's got it? God's got it. Jesus still has the world in his hand, no matter what we hear or see in the news. He is got it. He is wonderful. He is Almighty God, Eternal Father. And you know what's a good thing about all this political stuff? The government's on his shoulders. <laughs> when I see the government's going crazy, I'm like, the government eternally rests upon Jesus' soul. And that gives me great peace and joy. Amen. Closing, the great multitude of angels herald the birth of the Messiah. <clears throat> and the shepherds, they came to do what? To marvel, to see the Savior. The kings came from the east to do what? To worship. And to marvel at what God had done. That God would break into this broken world marred by sin. And the knowledge that God cannot be stopped or deterred brings me great joy and comfort. Even though we live in a fallen world, we're seeing the inbreaking of the Lord more and more. More and more. China and Africa and the U.S. The Lord is alive and well, and He's in breaking in more than we never know. So let's stand and let's sing with joy tonight of all that our Savior is doing. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. <coughs>